Thank you for visiting with us today. My name is Maria Enchikin. I'm in grade 10. I am Deshi Tan from the village of Angoon in Alaska. I'm Jenna Hidey McGee, and I'm Tlokuyat from the west coast of Vancouver Island, and I'm in grade 11. Hello, uh, my name is Zachary DeWolf. Uh, my traditional Cree name is Uki Mao P. Sim, uh, and I'm president of the board. Hi, I'm Chandra Hampson, and I'm Ho Chunk from the Winnebago tribe of Nebraska, and I'm also uh, Ojibwe from White Earth. My Ho Chunk name is actually Heinuka Drydega, and I am the vice president of the school board. I'm Denise Juno, I'm the superintendent of Seattle Public Schools, enrolled member of the Mandan Hidatsa tribes of North Dakota where my mom is from. I grew up on the Blackfeet Reservation where my dad is from in Montana. My uh, Blackfeet name is Utsqui Siksikiaki, which means blue cloud woman, and just received that a few years ago. It's a really great honor um, to have that name. And so just really proud to be one of the leaders of Seattle Public Schools. and, and do the work that we do on behalf of all the students in Seattle. Would you guys talk a little bit about your own experiences in school as natives? Well, the, the experiences I think about are, they actually are some of maybe more pain points in my experience. You know, I remember one time my, I think just trying to be, to fit in, I was trying to offer something for a class. I remember my mom said, you know, I can, I can make fry bread, I can make Indian tacos if, you, if your teacher allows it. And, um, I remember I felt so proud about that, but when I brought that to school, I, uh, I felt um, that people weren't maybe appreciating or respecting or even making fun of or you know saying some things about certain things that were derogatory or harmful that um, people say to us as native kids. And so I, it, it caused me to think about like, is this really some part of my identity that I wanna share with people if I feel harmed from doing that? So it took me a really long time to kind of come back um, full circle to a place where I was really proud to be a native kid and um, I remember when I was in high school that's when I, I worked at an after school program for native kids and, and, and being in community is what kind of gave me my power my strength and so it took me a bit but you know I think through a, a maybe a, a harmful or um, hurtful moment I was able to, to grow and then able to find my community and, and my strength through that. I grew up in a both uh, reservation and reservation adjacent communities. Um, I lived on my reservation in Nebraska um, when I was very young um, and then we moved um, back to a reservation where my parents were both working, the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation in Oregon. And so when I went to Head Start, which I consider part of my school experience, and that was where I had lots of uh, really wonderful influence by all the native aunties in the community. Then we were also bused into town for kindergarten because there wasn't a school in our uh, community. And that's when I uh, became aware of the, first of all, the, the racism that was um, in my community in the, in the local town um, where I was forced to choose between my native friends uh, that I had been bussed in with and the rest of the community um, and as a light skinned person feeling like I had to choose, that my identity wasn't something that I got to define, to, to you know, decide, but that other people were deciding for me. So it was, it was mostly a difficult experience in terms of feeling very proud based on what I had been provided by my family and knowing exactly who I was, but feeling like it wasn't okay to represent that um, in the classroom or in the um, broader school community. There wasn't, um, there was a lot of really, really negative racism uh, in classes, in textbooks, um, pretty much all experiences. My, uh, the community was very negative towards um, the tribe in general back in those days. Um, on the other hand, my mom was a native ed teacher in the early days in adult Indian education. and. Um, so I knew how important that was, and then my experiences, just a few touchstones from when I was in high school, and there were only a few of us Native students that had made it through to high school towards graduation, and we had the opportunity to spend some time together. I remember getting a binder that was um, intended to promote me, and um, my friend Boogie, who became one of my closest friends, that just really empowered me in a way that um, I wish that I had had it all the way through school, and then I got it again in college, but it just taught me how important that, that identity support was in that school environment. 
Yeah, I would just like, I tell people often that my educational journey brought me from Head Start to Harvard and just everything that happened in between there. I grew up on the Blackfeet Reservation in Browning and so the, high, the schools that I attended were probably 97, 98% American Indian. Um, and so I think it was a very different experience than Native students experience here in Seattle Public Schools. Working my way through a reservation school where it's steeped in culture, which we all learn, and, but there's still a lot, of, um, a lot of issues to be dealt with within the Native community as far as who belongs, um, how you look, how cultural are you, I mean all those issues that we have to grapple with as Native people. My parents were both educators as well in the system and so I was a privileged person working my way through the system that they were going to look out for me. But I can think back and know a lot of my peers that didn't make it, that didn't have the privilege I had. I'm really, really glad I grew up there and attended school there. But it also, I think and as, as an adult looking back, really makes me aware of privilege in our system and the idea that we have a lot of work to do to make sure those students who do not have that privilege are successful as well. How about you? Can we ask you? Like, what's your experience in Seattle Public Schools? Last year I just moved so I didn't like have the same thing. Mm -hmm. But coming here it's been pretty good. I mean like in history class like if there's like a little thing about like natives they like look at me and I'm like well <laughs> do you expect me to know <laughs> like um but it, I think it's great to have a classroom or time in the week where we get to like all natives can come together and like we could just like share our issues because like no matter what like we've all well not I, I don't want to say we all but like some of us experience the same thing or like we can relate to it more and like we can all like boost each other up if we're sad or like give them help if they need it so cool. yeah I really um, I didn't realize how much having a teacher you could relate to like this or a native teacher would mean to me but then I met Stacia our teacher and she just meant so much it felt like I it opened all my horizons I felt like I could follow her and she could be my guidance and so it was really nice to have a native teacher. She doesn't like seem like a teacher to me like at first she did because I didn't really know her but like once you get to know her it's just like a friend or like a mentor to like she like takes you she under her wing. Yeah. You, like no other teacher. Yeah she understands you and like we can talk about like what happens at home and what happens at school not being afraid to tell her and not being afraid to hear her response. And then when something happens in class, like I remember at a really tough time they were showing this native documentary and there's some horrible images of genocide and murder and all that stuff, just being able to go to talk to her and say I, I didn't feel comfortable and she went and talked to my teacher instead of me. Mm -hmm. And that was, that it, I don't know, it just opened everything up for me. So it's great having her. Yeah, that sponsorship is important. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk Definitely. a lot about mentorship, but a lot of times that connection has to be around sponsorship mm -hmm. and the ability to carry someone's message mm -hmm. in, in that, uh, especially in the education system. And so yeah. just really appreciative of that teacher. And sometimes it's just being seen, I think, yeah. especially in all, all, a lot of systems, Particularly, I mean, as Native students, we, it, it, there's not always somebody that is seeing you, not just with their eyes, but like seeing you. And I think to have that yeah. is what we absolutely need to be replicating. Number one thing I hear from students is that they want a teacher who looks like them or has their lived experience mm -hmm. in front of their classroom at some point yeah. in their educational career. And so this just sort of really reinforces all the conversations I've had. So.